Today's video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and in today's video we'll be speaking about Mortal Kombat 4. Mortal Kombat 4 is a 1997 arcade fighting game developed by Midway Games that is the fourth main installment in the Mortal Kombat franchise and a sequel to 1995's Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 4 was released in arcades in 1997, and it was the first title in the series, and one of the first made by Midway in general, to use 3D computer graphics. It is also the final game in the series to be released in an arcade. The following year, it was ported to the PlayStation, Nintendo 64, PC, and Game Boy Color, as well as an updated version titled Mortal Kombat Gold, which was released exclusively for the Dreamcast. The gameplay system in Mortal Kombat 4 is similar to that of previous games, with the use of weapons and objects during fights being one of the most notable additions. The plot follows the corrupted Elder God, Shinnick, and his attack on his former comrades who trapped him in the Netherrealm millennia before the start of the series. The remaining 17 playable characters are involved in a battle between good and evil, with the forces of light attempting to prevent Shinnick and the forces of darkness from conquering all realms. The Midway staff encountered difficulties rendering the graphics while developing the game because it was one of the first 3D fighting games they created. Mortal Kombat 4 co-creator Ed Boon stated that the team wanted to make the game more violent than its predecessors by removing the comical finishing moves. Since its release, the game received generally positive response from critics, with the exception of the Game Boy Color port. Mortal Kombat 4 is played in the same manner as previous titles in the series, the run button and combos are still used, and despite the 3D graphics, characters are limited to a 2D path with the exception of sidestepping. MK4 introduces a limited weapon system that allows each character to use a special weapon by pressing a specific button combination. Once equipped, the weapons are primarily used by the punching buttons. Swinging, clubbing, and even tossing the weapons are all examples of this. Weapons can also be dropped on purpose, similar to arena objects such as severed heads and rocks, which is a new addition to the series. If an opponent's weapon falls, the other character can pick it up and use it. MK4 introduced the maximum damage cap to the game's combo system, which automatically breaks combos if they deal more than a certain amount of damage to a player, preventing infinite combos, though this cap can be removed with a code. Unlike Mortal Kombat Trilogy, which featured a variety of finishing moves, Mortal Kombat 4 features the standard two fatalities per character, as well as two stage fatalities that can only be performed in specific arenas and involve the winning character throwing their opponent into a section of the arena where they are killed. Unlike the first three games, this one lacks non-playable boss characters, with the exception of Goro in the home versions. The legend goes that Shinnick, one of the Elder Gods who control the Mortal Kombat universe's six realms, attempted to conquer them all thousands of years before the events of the first game. In a war that lasted hundreds of years, the Thunder God Raiden fought and defeated Shinnick, sending him to the Netherrealm, where he would be trapped forever. Shinnick has now escaped the Netherrealm with the assistance of the sorcerer Quan Chi, and he seeks vengeance on the Elder Gods who exiled him. In his plan, he first conquers the realm of Edenia, with the aid of a traitor, Tanya, while he prepares to attack the Elder Gods. To stop Shinnick's threat, Raiden seeks assistance from the Earth Realm warriors who rescued the realms from Emperor Shao Kahn in previous titles. There is also an Easter egg in the form of Meat, a hidden character and skin in Mortal Kombat 4, that transforms the player's character into a bloody and fleshy skeleton. In addition, the game introduces alternative costumes, as opposed to palette swaps in previous installments. In conclusion this is a fun game, and the emulation is very playable at this point. It seemed to be very popular with the community, and if we're lucky maybe we'll be able to get playable reproductions for our homes. I would also like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and found it informative. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. These are simple small clicks for you, but they mean the world to this channel. Thank you.